So what's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel guys. I am David. On today's episode, we got the 2004 Cadillac Escalade EXT back in the shop. We're going to continue on our series with it. We got uh, new compressors, we got new air shocks, we got new electronic shocks up front. We have a dual DIN with the backup camera to put in. We have rear brake pads to get done. I, have, I snapped inadvertently, I snapped all of the bolts trying to get the tire off. Um, and so I'm going to be showing you guys how to press in and out studs or uh, replace the studs on the um, on the rear. So we're going to be getting into that. And also it's going to be in a series. Um, also, we left off uh, initially. If you watch, if you're watching and paying, if you're watching the series, you already know that we're putting money into the older vehicle, and that's fine by me because we don't want to make a car payment of twelve hundred dollars for for a truck. I just I just can't justify that kind of money when it was thrown at me. That said. I did put a hundred dollar deposit on a Ford Lightning, the new electric vehicle pickup truck, because I would love to convert everything in my life as much as possible over into electric, uh, from my lawnmower to my chainsaws to you name it. I would like everything to be on battery powered and, and EV type stuff like that. Um, the Tesla truck, I, I like the Tesla truck by a lot. Um, I just don't think it's as practical as I'm going to need to be for the things that I do in my life. Um, and I like the look of the Ford Lightning because it's very traditional. And I like the way it looks. The Riviana looks good, but it won't tow my it won't tow my motorhome. Um, there's, so there's a lot of different pickups out there that are looking nice but don't fit my application. So far, the Ford F-150 Lightning does look like it's going to fit my application. And if I'm going to make a payment on anything, I'll make a payment on one of those because I would love to switch and convert over to that. So that said. Let's go ahead and jump right into this video, guys. We can talk more as we go, but let's go ahead and get this uh, the rear end sorted out. That's what we're going to start with, getting the studs pressed out, new ones pressed in, and getting the brake pads done out rear, and getting the air shocks done out rear. And then we're going to jump to that compressor and troubleshoot to see if we can get all of that stuff working again. All right, so as you, can, as you saw, the wheel's already off, guys. And we need 18 millimeter. There's uh, two back. There's two bolts, right? Right. There's one right here and one on the bottom side. Two 18s. Unfortunately, my camera is too big to get the angles. Like I don't own a little GoPro. Actually, it's actually a pretty fairly decent sized camera, uh, so it won't fit back there. But rest assured, there's two 18s, or at least on my truck, they're 18s. And there's only four bolts that hold the caliber, the caliber, and the caliber mounting bracket on. Actually, I'm sorry. There's two bolts that hold the caliber map caliber mounting bracket on and two bolts that hold the caliber to the caliber mounting bracket. Now with that said, there's two 18s. You can't miss them. Look back there. You're going to see them. Put your wrench on them and get them off. All right, guys. So for the record, also, I use a ratcheting 18. Once I broke them loose, I get the ratchet 18 back there because it's a really tight space in there to actually, if you leave the socket on, it'll back out so far you can't get the socket off. So use a wrench. Well, at least that's what I'm using. All right, so once you got your caliber off, just make sure you zip tie it up. I zip tie mine right there. Just, just zip tie it up. Get it secured so it's not hanging by the brake line. All right, guys. So we're going to grab our big hammer. We're just going to punch him out. All right, so to put the studs back in, you just gotta sneak them in there. It's a tight fit, but you can sneak them in. And you may have to turn this, you may have to turn your hub a little bit just to get them in, but you can sneak them in there. All right, so the studs are in, you know, uh, I you know, tightened them in a little bit. So I have this cool little stud puller thinger in her. Things are really expensive. They got a little bearing in them. You guys see that little bearing or whatever in it? And it just helps you pull the, it helps you pull the stud right through. And also recently, I picked up myself a Ryobi um, half-inch driver here. Uh, half-inch, yeah, driver. And um, I want to see what this thing's got. Uh, I mean, it says it's got uh, 600 pounds of braking free torque and 450 pounds of torque to, for tightening and stuff like that. It's got a bunch of modes. I got it set on the highest mode on three. And uh, I want to see how this thing does in comparison to my air tools.
Ooh, it's even got some nifty little lights up front. And so far, yes, this little tool as a one use has enough power to pull these studs through it. That's nice. Alright, and just like that, studs run. Very easy, simple job to do. Uh, with the right tools, because if you don't have those tools, that project can be a lot more interesting, I want to say. <laughs> um, or, if you really have the time in your hand, or you really want to you know, do it a different way, you could pull the entire axle out and take it to a, uh, a press, you know, and press them in. But that little tool, you know, and this little Ryobi, like I said before, it's holding up. So that's I'm pretty impressed so far with this thing. But I'm going to continue to work with this thing to see how much it's going to do. And we have to replace the caliber on this side. And I want to do the shocks on this side while we're right here. And in this space, I want to put the air shock back in over here. But before we can put the air shock back on, I do want to get the caliber done. Uh, and the brakes and everything, uh, the caliber on this side, and the tire and everything, uh, tires on that side, tires on that side, pull the caliber, get everything ready to put the brake, brakes and rotors back on, and I want to replace the air compressor to make sure that air compressor is working first, because that's working and it's humming and doing what it should do, I'll plug in all the air lines to make sure I'll plug it on the airlines to make sure all of this stuff is still functioning before I take the shocks actually out and if they're not working then we're going to have an issue. So actually we're going to jump to the other side. Let's go ahead and pull the air compressor out because the brakes and rotors and all that stuff is easy stuff to do. I do want to make sure that the new air compressor is going to work uh, and that the airlines on this system is work are they're still all functioning and working properly. Yeah, let's let's go do this. Let's, we're going to pull the air compressor out. Let's go. All right, so the air compressor is right there. That's my air compressor. Now, my camera and tripod setup is way too big to try to get up in here and really show you guys, and I'm not on a lift. I'm literally working off the ground. So I'm just gonna pull this uh, air compressor out. There's a ton of videos out there. Not that I want you know you to stray away from my channel and not and not watch the cool things going on, but unfortunately it's just it's it's not gonna make good for filming. So it, it'll be boring watching me bump my head under here you just standing there, you know, like, so, I'm, I'm going to film this off camera, I'm not going to put this on camera, I'm just going to pull this out, to my knowledge, there's a bolt in the frame, and there's two on the side, and it, it just lifts up and left, because, like anyone else, I looked at YouTube to see how hard this job was going to be, and it's not a bad job, allegedly, um, so, I'm just going to film it off, I'm just, just going to get it out. All right, guys, so this is the new one. We're out of the box. We're looking good. If I can find where I ordered this from, I will leave a link in the description for it. But it looks pretty much identical. It does come with two power cords just because if you have this style or if you have that style. Now, mine has this one on it, so this is what we're going to be using. So, let's get it done. I don't see this breather on this. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this one off of here and put it onto here. Okay, now let's go install this guy. So, because the, um, the wire here hasn't been plugged in anything for a long time, this is really corroded and all, and all green in there. Uh, it's not going to make for a good connection, so it actually won't. It just it won't work. So, a little quick, a uh, little trick of the trade. A little bit of uh, white vinegar. Let it soak. Clean it up with a brush. Should be good to go. Not sure what happened, but I ended up losing my audio feed. But I am installing the new caliber. So, we've got some nice shiny new rotors here. Um, 
Don't forget to brake clean them. I always run brake clean over them. Get all the, all the oil or whatever. And this particular uh, caliber and mounting bracket setup, it already came loaded with all the hardware that your brake your brake pads slide on, all the metals. So I don't have to replace any of them. On the other side, I'm going to have to replace them. But on this side, they're all shiny new. Don't forget to lube up all the surfaces. I don't forget to lube up the back side of the brake pads so they don't do no squealing on you. Uh, on, either, on either side, at least that's what I do. You know, you know, I'm not a professional mechanic. I'm a guy working in his garage. So you don't have to take that advice. But it is what I would suggest to you. All right, brake pads are on. Let's just go ahead and slide the caliber back on and put your two bolts back in. I do not know all of the torque specs and all that stuff. I just do everything tight. Um, if anyone out there happens to know torque specs for the caliber mounting bolts and all of that fun stuff, and you care to share the information, please drop us all a comment below. I mean, please comment below, and we'll all learn together. I'm sure I can Google it and look it up. I just, I've never just, just never done it now. My advice to you, if you're doing this, is follow torque specs. It's very important, especially for your your, your tire. Uh, sometimes if you tighten one, follow your torque specs, guys. Do as I say, not as I do. That's it. Brakes, rotors, pads, new caliber, beautiful thing. I do have to bleed this guy out still, and I have a uh, a. Uh, I have a bleeding kit that I picked up from Harbor Freight many, many moons ago because I'm a one-man operation where you, you tap it onto this, you crack it loose, and it siphons through. I'll show it to you guys when I go to do it. For now, I have to rinse and repeat on the opposite side, so I'm just going to run over there and get that one done, put new rotors, new brake pads in, and then I'll jump back here and I'm going to show you guys my, my brake bleeding kit that I have. Just do this in a sandblasting cabinet just to give it a quick once over. So what I decided I was going to do was I was just going to take off this rear shock before I put my rotor and stuff back on to make my life a little bit easier. This little Ryobi is pretty nice. All right, not too bad at all. Not, not, it was just two bolts, pretty simple. So I ended up having to pause and never realized it was on video, but I had to pause uh, and leave the project for overnight because I do have this thing called children and they needed me last night and I'm a father before I am anything else, mechanic, wood splitter, I am the father first. So my kids wanted to play a little bit before, before bedtime and you know, I'm all about that. So uh, this is the next day, uh, needless to say. And the wires came in. So before I put that other shock back on, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna splice into this and put this new uh, this new little fitting on because this is what plugs into the air shock and those are completely corroded like we've been saying. I gotta figure out a better lighting situation. This light, is, I mean, it's a bright, bright, bright light, but it's just like the most inconvenient light. I, I need like a magnet light or something. I gotta figure out something. Gotta get something. That's getting annoying. All right, so for my record, with the clip facing up, the green one is to the left, and the looks like blue with the white line is on the right. 
All right, simple enough. Uh, this wire is pretty long now, but it's going to zip tie it up or whatever I have to do once I'm done. Um, and that's going to do that. We're just going to uh, go ahead and just throw the shock back in. Just two more bolts. Same two that we took out. We're going to put back in. Let's get it done. All right, so shock is back on. Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Just two bolts. Zip them on in. Um, next to the back, I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together. Get my caliber pushed in. Put my new brake pads in. Put the... Put the caliber mounting bracket on, put my new rotor on, all of that fun stuff. Let's get that done next. All right, so that's it. Air shocks on, calibers built and done. New rotors, new brake pads, everything is lubed up, everything's tightened down. We're good to go. We're going to go swap out the rear shock on the other side and plug that one in. And then we're going to head up front and we're going to get the brakes, um, not the brakes, the electronic shocks up front. We're going to get those installed. So I'll do kind of like the fast forwarded uh, version of this side. You, get, you know, it's the same exact thing. Bolt here, bolt there. Pop it out. We're going to replace these wires and uh, plug the new harness in, plug the air fitting in, move on to the front. So that's all. All right, guys, so we're back up front here. Um, this is only two bolts. There's one at the bottom. There's one at the top. It's a very simple process. Pull the bolts out and replace the shock. This truck is a little rusty, so this sometimes fights a little more than most. If you're not in a place where you get a lot of salt on the ground and all that kind of stuff, these bolts are going to come in and out a lot easier. For mine, uh, you know, sometimes you got to fight because of the rust. That said, I know I've said it already, but so far... This thing is a monster, man. It's it is it's been zipping everything out. So I don't know. Let's uh let's go ahead and give this one a shot. All right, that's one bolt. If you if you find yourself having to do this job, like I said, my camera's just too big and clunky to try to get in there and really get a, a good view at it. But you'll see the stem sticking out. You gotta hold the stem and, and turn the nut off of it. I'm just going to use a pair of vice grips to get after it. Alright, so that's not bad at all. Uh, this is the part that I was saying right here. You want to grab this tip right here with a pair of pliers and then the bolts on here and you just want to break, you know, I personally use a 15, I use a ratcheting 15, put it right on top. and. You know, while you hold this top right here, uh, I held it with a pair of, ply, uh, pair of ice grips. So, wasn't bad. Let's grab a new one and throw it back in and throw it in. Also, just for the record, there's a cushion on the bottom. There's a cushion on the top. Now, this goes into the, sock, uh, into the socket where you pulled it out of. This goes on top. Not both of these at the same time and then you put it in. It's not going to go well for you. It's This goes on. It goes in, this goes on the top. So it sandwiches the piece of metal uh, in between that you're working on there. I mean, that it's going into there. So this is going to be the new one. And mine came with this piece here. Can you guys see that? Oh, my light's about to die. Mine came with this one here. Um, and if anybody out there knows better than I do, I'm assuming because it's electronic ride, ride controller front that this just screws onto this. And inside the truck, there is a wire cap that you just simply pull off. And I'm assuming that wire part just plugs into this for the electronic control is what I'm assuming. So, uh, and this is the other piece I was telling you about here before. Make sure, let's pull this off, that this goes up in reverse. And then this goes on top to sandwich the metal in between these two. Uh, also, so I don't destroy this, I'm just going to use an adjustable wrench. And I didn't think about it until I saw this nice new shiny piece. And I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, use an adjustable wrench so I don't destroy it. All right, guys, so that's it for this side. We got to go to the other side and uh, do the same thing. Two bolts that just pop on out. I'm running out of daylight, so I don't know if it's going to make for good filming. So I probably will skip the other side for you guys and save you that pain. And we'll jump right into bleeding the brakes out back. I'll show you the kit that I use that I picked up from Harbor Freight. And you guys can get a look at that. Sprung a leak right there and a brake line underneath there. It's just on the top of the frame there. 
So, so in lieu of the line breaking, we're gonna go ahead and send the car off to a shop. A friend of mine owns a shop right up the street and we're gonna let him do it. He's gonna do all new brake lines for me. I'm very confident that he can get that job done. I just don't wanna dedicate the time that it would take me to do it on the floor in my garage. I just have so many other projects going on and so many other things going on that I do have to pick and choose my battles. And that was just a battle I didn't wanna have here. Um, and then also I always preach you know, take the time, enjoy what you do. I wasn't gonna enjoy doing that job in any way, shape or fashion, because it would have been a lot, a lot of work. So I I chose to let that one go and just um, let him do it, let it be his thing. Um, and for the few hundred bucks it's gonna cost me, I'm okay with that. Even though I love working on my own stuff and like doing my own things, like I said, pick and choose your battle. Sometimes you have to know, know when to fold them, you know what I mean, if you will. So if you've made it this far into the video, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I ran into a number of audio problems with my camera. My camera stopped filming uh, sorry, our film, but then cut out my audio and then started cutting out some of my film. It was giving me all kinds of error meshes. So I, I went back to my brand new phone. Um, I've upgraded my phone recently and I'm just gonna go back to filming on my phone for now. And it might even help with some of my videos because my phone's small enough to actually get into the wheel wells and stuff like that. So until I can afford myself like a cool little GoPro or a couple of them so I can get some really good angles and stuff like that. Um, all right, I don't wanna sit and ramble on guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, interact with me down in the comments guys. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. As promised every Friday, I will be putting out videos. So. Two things, guys. Don't forget to take the time to enjoy what you do. And don't forget, work does not do itself. So don't be afraid to get out there and get after it.